Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Interesting Stuff, where we dive deep into topics where other people fear to tread. And today we will be looking at the history of communication. Now, ancient communication is difficult to document because we are limited to what has survived down throughout the ages and with the wars and the other turmoil and earthquakes and tsunamis and God knows what happening, we've lost a lot of info. However, whilst we can make solid assumptions based on things like cave drawings, for instance, we can only guess how verbal communication developed at certain points. And on the subject of verbal communication, some languages are quite simple. They are written as they are spoken. These are called phonetic. Other languages, however, such as English, are dual or non-phonetic. They are not written as they are spoken, which is why writing can be difficult, especially spelling from time to time. English itself is a composition of at least 10 different older languages. Regarding the general topic of communication, however, some researchers believe that information may have at some point in time been passed down using simple ideas such as a piece of string, perhaps with knots in it. However, it's impossible to know for sure as there are no surviving examples of these types of communication. And if we want to think about evolution, well, it can be split into two areas, oral and visual. The former, oral, developed from basic animal noises used as warnings or soothing sounds. Sort of your ah, 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 or rrr sounds. Hope that wasn't too scary. And as we started to walk on two feet and our vocal cords changed shape, we were able to go beyond primitive guttural utterances, eventually softening our tones and our speech. This happened specifically in the English language through the addition of the vowels, the A, E, I, O, and G sounds. Oh, and there's also a half vowel, Y, when it appears at the end of a word, such as in day. And the addition of these sounds into words made words softer and longer. Whilst visual communication may be seen as separate from oral, it is likely that it developed originally because of the limitations in our speaking. Before words had been created, it is thought that drawings were used to explain things or record events. Ironically, once language had been created, much of the visual communication then became symbolic of the thing that it described, rather than a true rendition of it. This sadly meant that even more history was lost, but at least we have the little bits and pieces that we can try to put together. And also down throughout the ages, our languages have grown in size. Did you know that it's estimated that a week's worth of news in an average newspaper today contains more information than anyone in the 18th century would have learned in their entire lifetime? Sadly, most of the information today is gossip, hearsay, advertisements, or just irrelevant to most people. Such is modern life. So what does the timeline of communication look like? Well, if we go back 32,000 years, we have the cave drawings. You know, the, the animals and the people with spears on the walls. Then if we go back 10 to 12,000 years, we have the petroglyphs, which were pictures carved deep into the rocks. Then 7,000 years ago, we have the pictograms, pictures that told the stories. Then 5,000 years ago, we have the Sumerian cuneiform, shapes with specific representations. Then 4,000 years ago, the Egyptian hieroglyphs. Remember, I'm sure you've seen them in some of your books, a lot of, a lot of animals and mythological symbols. 2,700 years ago, we had Latin, the first modern alphabet to be used. And then, finally, around 1,000 years ago, the English language emerged. This was born out of the conflicts between the Angles of England and the tribes of Germany as they fought wars for dominance. Remember also that many types of communication have been used. 
Think about the, the Indians with their smoke signals. Think about how ships communicated between each other in history with flags and lights. How armies communicated with cannons. And not to mention how we communicate with our bodies all the time. Sometimes we don't even need words. We can understand from the position of a person's feet or their hands or even the way their eyes look. We can tell from that what they are thinking. And don't forget as well, there's sign language for people who are deaf, which is a complete alphabet that you can create with your hands. Along with this, much communication has also been coded down through time so that messages could be passed on in secret, especially during periods of conflict and wars. And some other odd facts. Well, Chinese uses 80,000 different symbols in its language, which is quite a lot. God knows how you can remember all that. That'll be a tough test at school. And then there's the fact that there are 6,000 different languages on planet Earth. And most of us have problems learning just one. <laughs> how crazy is that? And also don't forget that good communication requires not just that we speak, but that we also listen as well. And that we pay attention to what another person is saying and the meaning within what they are saying. Because despite the fact that we communicate all the time, we still make a lot of mistakes. And some of those mistakes can be really costly. So it's well worth working on this skill and making sure that we do it to the best of our ability. Or at least try. Or at least keep working on the skill so that we consistently improve. And in the end, we do need to remember that words matter. Just as communication matters, words matter. They can heal or they can hurt. And with the words that you choose, you get to decide. So I think it's worthwhile making the effort to be helpful. And don't forget, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, to reach out and ask people if they need a hand with something. Ask people if they need help. Because the more we help each other, the easier things will get. I'm quite sure. So this was a very brief history of communication. There's much more to the topic and you can dive into much more information online. So if this piques your interest, maybe you want to explore a little bit more. Otherwise, if it didn't, well, it's your own fault for not telling me what it is that you would like me to present to you. So drop me a line, uh, get in touch and let me know which subjects you would like to hear about and I will try to dive into them and share a little bit of the bigger, wider, maybe wiser world with everybody. So thank you very much for tuning in today. Wherever you are, I wish you an absolutely fantastic time. And don't forget, under the video, you'll find an extra set of questions to help you with your comprehension. There we are. That's it for today. Have a great one, and I'll speak to you again soon. Take care.